What's up guys, it's Chad here with G-Reviews coming to you from my kitchen table once again. Now if you're kind of puzzled as to exactly what I'm going to review, what you saw in the intro, if you stay tuned you'll find out right now. Alright, this is the product I'm doing my review on today. This is the AIMTOM SPS 230. Uh, portable battery backup system, again from AIMTOM, okay? The main specs on this are going to be 230 watt hour battery, which equates to 62,400 milliamp hours, okay? I'm going to do a complete test on this unit, show you a five or six different things that this thing can charge that you'd probably use in a household, on a camping trip, or for survival situations. Stay tuned. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up and the like. Here we go. These are the devices that I'm going to be charging off of this unit. I'm going to go over the milliamp hour capacity of all these batteries and I'm going to tell you exactly what port I'm going to be charging each device from. All right, let me get my information out here. All right, I have two iPhone 6s, okay? These were here, yeah, they are a little on the older side. Um, however, they are still used as, you know, pretty much iPods. They're not connected to Verizon anymore, but sometimes the girls do use them to play with. Okay, each one of these batteries is 1,715 milliamp hours. Okay, so 1,715 and 1,715. Okay, this next one is my personal 8 Plus, iPhone 8 Plus. Okay, the battery on that is 2,675 milliamp hours. Okay, this next one is my daughter's Amazon Fire 8 inch kids edition. Okay, this one right here is 3,210 milliamp hour battery. Okay, last but not least is my, my 9.7 inch iPad. This one has a pretty big battery in it of 8,827 milliamp hours. Okay, so total of all the devices I'm going to be charging at one time from the AIMTOM is 18,142 milliamp hours. That is a pretty big draw all at one time off of this, but I'm pretty sure this thing has what it takes to get the charging done. All right, so I just found out. So I did a quick take before this one. I apologize. Um, you cannot run the AC and the DC on this unit at the same time. I'm sure that's probably a generally known thing, but I read some of the instructions and I didn't believe it said anything about it not being able to run them at the same time. Well, we'll go from there. All right, like I said, this is my iPad. Uh, full size battery is, let's make sure we can see that. 12%, all right, 12%. Monday, October 28th, it's 7.58. All right. Take off this nice uh, weather resistant cover. Plug in the wall adapter for the iPad. Turn the unit on. As you can see, full battery. All right, plug this in. All right, as you can see, it is charging. So we're gonna go from there. These three iPhones, and then my iPad charging all at once. So we'll see how long this takes and how much uh, battery it drains off of the AIMTOM. All right. Time now is 9.37, same day, a couple hours after I started filming this. My cell phone has 89%, as you guys can see on there. Uh, the pink 6S, 100%. The black 6S. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. 93%. And the iPad, 60%. Alright, 
All right. Well, that's that. Obviously, um, one of the phones is done. Um, pink 6S. So I'm going to unplug that from the system. All right. So that one's done. We're down to iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 6S, and iPad. And obviously, the battery indicator on this hasn't gone down a bit. All right. 1047. 100% charged. So I'm unplugging this one. The only thing we got left is the 9.7 inch iPad, and that is at 88%. And still, still 100% battery. All right, iPad is done, 100% charged, 12.06. It probably finished a few minutes ago. I wasn't paying attention good enough for this one. It's getting late. All right, that's done. And I'm going to unplug the charger. Just wanted to show that the battery status has not changed after charging four devices. All right, this is going to be uh, test number two on the AIMTOM SPS 230. All right, from the last one with the charging the three iPhones and the iPad, okay, after the battery settled, it did drop a bar. I know on the I know on the video it showed it didn't, but this is the next day and we are testing it and it did drop a bar, okay? So it's at 80% battery. All right. What we got in the background here, this is the actual air mattress that me and the wife sleep on when we go camping. It is a queen size double thickness air mattress. So this thing's probably about 18 inches thick when fully inflated. Okay, what we are going to be using to blow this up today, guys, it is a wall plug, uh, portable pump. It does have the power requirements. I uh, hopefully we'll be able to see that on here. Uh, it is 35 watts. That's what it says right here. 12 volt, 35 watts. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so this should be more than enough power to power this over here. I have a timer so you guys can physically see how long it takes. Um, so we're going to plug this in here. Alright, plug it in there and uh, we'll plug this in here and we'll see how long this takes. Alright, I'm starting the timer now. Alright, so here's the plug and here we go. Look at that. It took 4 minutes and 18 seconds to pump up this double thickness queen size air mattress. Alright. I don't have a tape measure on me guys, but this is a full size iPad. So, it's about two of those. Alright, if that helps you. Uh, this is like I said what we use. Um, this unit right here, it hasn't dropped a bar from the time I started. Okay. Now this right here I love to use because on a trip, if we're at a campground where you're allowed to park your car right in the campsite, I would, you know, obviously hook this into the um, the power point in the car and pump it up. However, then trying to get the queen size air mattress from outside into the tent sometimes is a big pain. So this right here, guys, is going to help me out tremendously because I can just inflate this in the tent. All right, so we're going to start this and we're going to deflate it using the same pump. Just got to. Switch out the head onto the top of this, and uh, we'll go from there. Like I said, it hasn't dropped, hasn't dropped the bar yet. So 418 to blow it up. We're gonna reset it, and we are going to go for deflates.
All right. It might have just been because I was a little slow, but four minutes and 20 seconds to deflate. Uh, so that just kind of proves that the rate of inflating and deflate on this is almost exactly the same no matter what you're doing with it. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm going to show you on this. I'm going to unplug this. However, like I said, this thing just has a battery bar. Okay. So obviously, you can see that it hasn't dropped the bar. And I inflated the whole queen size air mattress and deflated it. All right. Go on to test number three. All right, test number three, guys. Here we're going to be testing some fans off the AIMTOM SPS 230. All right, the fan on the left is a fan I've had for years. The fan on the right is the new Cobalt 24 volt max lithium uh, fan. I just picked this up probably about a month before getting the AIMTOM battery pack. Um, just for the simple fact that when I go camping and it's hot, I like to bring a fan to circulate the air and kind of get the hot air out um, before going to sleep. All right, on this, after the last test, it still has 80% battery. All right, so there's that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run both of these fans off of this for about a 30-minute period of time, okay? And we'll see if that does anything to the battery. What I'm running is I got a pretty much a splitter. It's actually a timer. Um, it is Halloween, so I have most of my splitters outside on other uh, Halloween decorations. So I'm going to be plugging this in to the units. All right. Going to be plugging this fan on that one. And the good thing about this cobalt that I have found, and the reason why I got it, is because... This cobalt 24 volt max does take the cobalt 24 volt battery pack. Okay. Also, if you guys want, you can run it. See that right there in the back? I don't know if you can see that or not. But it also has the ability to plug it in. So that's what we're going to do. I don't have any small cables, so I had to go out in my garage and get one of my big, big, uh, big orange cables. So uh, I don't know if that's going to affect the draw or anything, but we got to use this. All right, we're going to go plug this in the backpack here. All right. So there's that. Both of the fans, we're gonna, this one only goes low, medium, high. This one has a, a variable, but uh, that thing can put out some serious, serious breeze. Here's just a normal bag. I don't know if you can see that, but that is holding the bag out straight and even higher than that. All right, but I'm going to put that down onto Just about 75%, and this one's going to go on medium. All right, both of the fans have air going, and we'll uh, put this on for 30 minutes. And I got my timer over here. All right, so we got the timer. We start that. And we'll come back in 30 minutes. All right, we're coming up on 30 minutes of runtime on the two fans. Uh, looking at the aim tom from here, I don't see that the battery has gone down any from the 80% we originally started with today. All right, well, that's 30 minutes. All right, on to test number four. As in the last test, I'm going to be doing some more charging in relation to the Cobalt products I have. I have multiple Cobalt products that all run on the 24 volt, 24 volt max batteries. Okay, this one right here is a 4 amp hour, okay, extended run, 24 volt battery. Now, I am pretty dang sure you won't be able to see this, but... 
This particular battery is rated at 96 watt hours. Okay. Like I said, again, you probably will not be able to see this. Let me see if I can zoom in. 96 watt hours. 4 amp hours, 96 watt hours. Okay. So we're going to go back over here. Alright, so again, guys. Um, let's see. We're going to charge this battery on the provided cobalt battery charger. All right, and half of the 96 watt hours is 48 watt hours. Okay, so that's what I'm going to have them to be charged. Like I said, it is halfway full. Okay. Now, this particular charger actually is a pretty beastly charger for this. I'm going to try to zoom in on this also. Wrong way. Okay. If you guys can see this, this is a 110 watt charger. Okay, so that's a little bit more than halfway of the uh, 200 watt inverter that the AIM Tom has. All right, there's also a built-in fan on this charger because it charges these batteries really quickly. Okay, so again, turning this on from the last thing. Now, see, this is something else. I noticed that whenever I turn the unit off and turn it back on, I feel like it updates the battery. Okay, see now it's showing, okay, we're down to 60% battery. So after that last uh, test with the two fans, it's down to 60%, okay? So I'm going to plug this bad boy in. Alright, the light's cycled. And I'm going to start this, and we'll see how long this takes to charge. Got this set up, so we're going to put this on. Don't know if you can hear that noise, but there is a fan in here because if without it, it would get hot. So it charges it, keeps the air going over the battery in the charger. So we're going to start that. All right, so we'll uh, come back when we're done. All right, it took a little over an hour uh, to charge the battery on my Cobalt. A little bit longer than just plugging it into the wall. Um, but as you can see, this is done, and um, it is now down to two bars. Two bars, so uh, charging charging the cobalt took a whole 20% of the battery, so. Alright, I got a bunch more stuff to charge on this, and hopefully it'll be up to the task. Another part of this test on the AIM-TOM unit is going to be two electric blankets. Um, these are each twin size electric blankets and I'm going to show you the plugs on these well there you go All right, hopefully you can see that but each of these electric blankets is 130 watts okay I don't know if you can see that or not I hope so alright same thing on this one they're made by the same company 130 watts Okay, here we have the AIM TOM unit. All right, uh, it is fully powered up. It's a full battery. I'm going to run a, this is a timer. I have all my Halloween stuff still up, so all my splitters are outside. But I'm going to plug in the two of these and uh, see, uh, see how the unit holds it. All right, like I said, full battery. All right, got each of the electric blankets plugged into this. And the good news is, red lights are on on each. I'm going to get the time. All right, it is 10.30 on November the 2nd. All right, so this is uh, going to be a test to see um, if I can get one full night running these to simulate if I was going camping in the winter time and I wanted to put these um, in our sleeping bags with us or on top of our cots or air mattresses if we're camping in the winter. So I'm going to turn these things on and see if they run. Alright, that one turned on. That one turned on. Alright. There's a total of six bars on each of these. I'm going to run them on three, so halfway. 
I just want to see if I can get a whole night out of these. And tomorrow morning, uh, we'll see uh, if the unit's still on and if the electric blankets are still running. All right, the time is now 6.51 a.m. Next morning, I got some bad news for you. It appears that the electric blankets overnight have depleted the aim tom. I'm checking both of them. Yep, they're both off. My girls are out here with me. And again, uh, on to the next test. All right, it's another great example of something you can use uh, for the same tom on. We got here my Cobalt 12 volt uh, tire inflator. Uh, I use this for multiple things. I use it for car tires. I use it for bicycle tires. I use it for pool floats and stuff in the summer. Um, but right now it's winter, November of uh, 19. And something that a lot of people have to do this time of the year is inflate their tires a little low on tire pressure. All right, so here we have the Aim Tom. All right, just wanna show you guys, yep, it is fully charged, okay? I have my wall plug right here okay gonna plug this thing in all right the unit does come on all right i'm gonna hook this in this is a uh, 225 60 r18 size so general kind of passenger car tire size all right all right hooked it all up all right, saying I got 30 pounds in the tire, I like to keep it at 35. So we're gonna bump it up to 35. So let's see if the Aim Tom can power this air compressor uh, to uh, inflate the tire. All right, look at that, guys. Yep, yep, there we go. All right, 35 pounds, guys. It's at 34 and a half, uh, 35. So, uh, all right, here we go. All right, another test, something that you may not think of to use this for, um, but this, uh, this TV, it's a 42 inch LED TV, and this uh, Blu-ray player here, uh, they are both running off the AIMTOM unit at once. I have my splitter, or my timer, like I said again, all my uh, splitters are outside on Halloween decorations, but I'm gonna be putting up Christmas soon, so they're just gonna stay outside. But like I said, this this right here is running the this Blu-ray player. As you can see, it's running right now playing this uh, Disney movie my kids have, and this 42 inch TV right here are all running off of this aim tom unit so for like hurricane situations where the power is out and you need news um if you have like bunny ear antennas it'll help out a lot uh some cable work some doesn't uh or if you're just going camping and want to bring along a tv and a blu-ray player or dvd player to just to uh watch a movie with the family uh this thing can do it um it's full battery i haven't run it for too long but being an led tv and that blu-ray player i doubt takes up a lot of power so Another thing, guys, this thing uh, runs beautifully on this TV. All right, for my final test, I'm going to test something, plug something into this that most of you would think that this would never run. Again, this is a 200 watt inverter, okay? I had to go into my wife's drawer to get this, okay? It is powered, all right? It is a 1200 watt blow dryer. Now, some would think, what in the world? There's no way this 200 watt inverter is going to power this 1200 watt hair dryer. So we're going to plug this in and see what happens. All right, plug this bad boy in. We're going to turn it on. All right, 
it is on. All right, here's for the test. Let's see if this thing works. Oh my gosh, it is working. It is on high. What in the world? I was just kidding, guys. I turned the uh, I turned the uh, temperature to cold, so it's just blowing out of the motor and no coils. This is what happens when you turn on the hot coils. Oh, and there you go. It's off. Um, this unit has a built-in surge protector. As soon as it senses more amperage, voltage, whatever, then it can handle it. Automatically trips and it goes off. There's no resetting fuses or anything. Alright, this concludes my review of the Aimtom SPS 230. Okay, This unit, what I was expecting and what I received is great. Okay, This unit did everything it said that it was supposed to do and anything that I followed that was in the power limits of this unit worked. Okay, This thing lasts a long time, way longer than any little portable battery backup thing I've purchased to this point. I have many, I have a Jackery 12,000 milliamp hour and a couple smaller ones other than that. Uh, this thing right here powers all the, everything I needed to and then some. I was testing stuff that I probably wouldn't normally use on this just to try to kill the battery. Works great. Now if you guys want me to test anything that you didn't see that I tested, just put it in the comments below and I'll try my best uh, to accommodate you guys. Um, within reason, anything that meets these power requirements, like I said, uh, 200 watt inverter, uh, three USB 2.0s running at 2.4 amps a piece, or two amps a piece if you're running something on all three. I don't have any USB C cables, I just haven't upgraded to those yet, and a standard, you know, 12 volt cigarette lighter. All right, so if you're looking for more power than this, my brother Scott on G Reviews has tested the next unit up which is twice the power output of this. So if you want to see something stronger than this, go over to the G Reviews and check out the other Amtom review we got up there. Alright, I'm going to give this two thumbs up and I hope you guys enjoy this review and stay tuned, we got more coming.